Well, good afternoon. Nice to be here again. I don't know what the time is. Half past three, and I haven't done a damn thing all day. Supposed to be painting, never did anything. <laughs> this is this video is in answer to a comment left by DX Pedro, who was talking about logging and thought it would be worth making a video on logging the whys and the hows. So, why do we want to log stations on shortwave? Here is my, <coughs> my own log. Spiral bound, so the pages don't fall out. <coughs> but, why do we want to log our stations? Surely once you've heard it, you've heard it. There are several good reasons for logging a station. Firstly, if you repeatedly listen to that station over a period of time and note the signal strengths, you can get a good idea of the conditions, <clears throat> what they're doing, are they getting worse, are they getting better, are they the same? Is the station changing frequency slightly? Are they moving around slightly? Because some of them do, because they're like pirate stations. And they move around slightly. Another good reason is if you change antennas. If you're logging a station over a period of time, conditions do, do change daily, but you can get a ballpark figure of what you usually get that station on. I don't know, what should we say, All India Radio, say for argument's sake, ballpark figure for All India Radio is like seven on your radio. So that's what I, roughly what I normally get. So you change antennas <coughs> and you say, right, ballpark figure now, over a f listen to it over a few days, ballpark figure now is nine. That antenna is better than what I had. <coughs> Or it could be the other way around, it could be worse, it could be worse. So it's a good way of um, getting a reference point for improving your station. <coughs> Excuse me, I have some kind of leaky throat or something. So there's two good reasons why you want to log your stations. So. Whether you can re read my terrible handwriting. Date. That's the first thing. Name of station. Mystery Radio 21. Frequency. Minimum and maximum signal strength. I always put the minimum and the maximum. Because stations do fluctuate a bit when you're receiving them. So I always put the minimum and the maximum. Time. 11.26 UTC, 12.26 GMT, because I'm in England. And any remarks you might think. Nice to hear, depart, despite the poor signal. And up here, <coughs> you'll see, it's probably one of the most important things, and that's the SINPO rating. S-I-N-P-O. SINPO. Now each one of those letters, S-I-N-P-O, stands for something and they are signal, interference, noise, propagation and the overall quality of the signal. So we take the first letter of each one and it spells SINPO and they call it a SINPO rating. So you give each one of those categories marks out of five. So for signal, it's five is excellent, four is good, three is fair, two is poor, and one barely audible. With the next um, three, INP, interference, noise, and propagation, it's still five, but it's interference, 
5 nil, 4 slight, 3 moderate, 2 severe, and 1 extreme. So that's how you rate your interference. Noise and propagation are done the same. Nil, slight, moderate, severe, and extreme. And when you get down to O, which is your overall rating, then you go back to the same as, uh, I can see that, S. Go, goes back to S, the same rating as S, which is excellent, good, fair, poor, or barely audible. So that's how you do it. It's a bit, little bit <coughs> subjective, I suppose, for each individual, what they think. But that's how you rate a signal, SINPO rating. Sometimes when I rate a signal, like for when I'm giving it the overall rating at the end, I might think, well, slightly better than good, but it's not good enough to be excellent. It's sort of in between. So then I will write 5 stroke 4, like a fraction. 5 cross 4. I don't know that I got one here that I've given that sort of rating to. Let's have a look in my book a minute. Yeah, there, look. <coughs> there you can see that. Voice of Turkey. And there, look, for propagation, I've given it four stroke three. So it was sort of a bit between. So I give it like a fraction. But that's how I do it. And that's how most shortwave listeners do it. I give it a SINPO rating. So that's how you, you rate a signal on shortwave. And that's why you rate a signal on shortwave. I hope that covers that <clears throat> little question. Any more um, questions you have, drop them below in the comments box and I'll answer them. I can't think of any station actually. Yes I can. China Radio International. That was quite a long time ago. China Radio International. I gave that a perfect signal on shortwave because the needle was jammed right over and it wouldn't move. Wouldn't move. And there was, wasn't a titter on the signal anywhere. It was, I'm amazed on shortwave because you normally get some kind of atmospherics or a little bit of something. This was like FM quality. It was just jam right over and it was perfect, it was perfect, but normally you get a bit of interference uh, or a bit of noise or a bit of propagation which is the fluttering of the needle going up and down, interference is other stations, you get other stations interfering with the signal, that's interference, noise is just what it says, uh, extraneous noise and like I say the propagation is see the thing drifting so that's um, how and why you rate the signal on shortwave so thanks everybody for subscribing I meant to say that earlier because the subscriber count is going up quite quickly now so that's fantastic so thanks to everybody for subscribing We'll see you on the next one. I think on the next one, I'm going to have a crack at getting up into the loft. See if I can get some footage of my antennas up in the loft. And I'll show you what I'm using <clears throat> for my DXing. So, see you on the next one.